रिसर्च फाउंडेशन के निर्देशक डॉक्टर अनिर्बान गांगुली से निवेदन करूंगा कि वहाँ और कार्यक्रम की रूपरेखा बताए So I must, uh, at the outset, uh, not only welcome all of you, but uh, obviously uh, pay a tribute to your valiant effort to come here in this evening, 2.4 degree, we started the day with 1.7, uh, the coldest in 118 years, so I'm extremely honored and delighted, and uh, one can really understand how uh, how engrossed and linked you feel to the topic today. So thank you so much for coming. A number of friends also I see and very nice to see them after a long time. You see, the, uh, this program was planned much uh, about two months back. <clears throat> now we had this, uh, we had this feeling that uh, here, were, here are two authors who have written these two books, each around a particular ideology, but describing the various expressions of that ideology, different dimensions of the expressions of that ideology. And uh, Sri J. Nandakumarji, who is the convener of Pragya Pravaha, the umbrella uh, body, so to say, for all our intellectual effort, is himself not only a <coughs> prolific social media activist in that sense, but a prolific writer and thinker who started off his work on the ground in Kerala. <coughs> One of those amongst us who understands this ideology extremely well, even in its practical expression and application. And therefore we thought we'll bring all these three of them together. Anant Vijayji has, over the years, and especially when I came in contact with him in 2016 very closely, uh, during that period when JNU there was a lot of interesting happenings going on in JNU. Has put up a very, a very cogent, a very systematic, and a very detailed effort to counter the expressions, intellectuals, intellectual expressions of this particular ideology, which is primarily based on creating and generating illusions and perpetuating conflict. This year, therefore, when his book appeared, it was a tremendous intellectual instrument and intellectual uh, repertoire of better understanding what this ideology is all about. Deep Halda's book, and I have had a lot of discussion already on his book. I myself participated in one such discussion in Kolkata brings out in the starkest form the violent aspect, the conflictual aspect of this particular ideology. And all, all, all of them have written what they have based on empirical evidences, oral testimonies, oral history. Deepalda's book is oral history. And Anant Vijay's is a dissection of the intellectual onslaught and the effort to push a false narrative that has been happening in the last 40 years in this country. So this was planned about two months back. But setting the context, we stand at a very interesting time. And when I stand here today, I also remember Sri Arun Jaitli ji. Because he was the first one who coined the phrase Tukre Tukre Gang. And he also brought about a very fundamental point during those days. He said when a fringe, when a 
a mainstream political party sides with a fringe ideology, an ideology which gets sustenance from separatism and from generating a sense of insecurity in the country, that causes worry. <clears throat> Friends, today <clears throat> we stand at a very interesting time and because th that's why this program becomes quite interesting. Okay, okay. We see that at the forefront of the anti-CAA -E protest, we see communist leaders and ideologues on the road and in TV studios. That's very interesting. How does one explain that it was the first left front government in West Bengal in 1997, which came to power on the shoulders of the refugee movement, how does one explain that the first left front government in West Bengal, which had promised the Bengali Hindu refugees rehabilitation in the state once they came to power, how is it that the same left front government in West Bengal ordered those very same Bengali Hindu refugees belonging primarily to the Dalit communities to be fired upon. In 1964, in the Loks, in the Rajya Sabha, Comrade Bhupesh Gupta of the CPI, legendary, who had sided with Mrs. Gandhi during emergency, brought in a motion on the need to rehabilitate Bengali Hindu refugees who have been thrown out of East Pakistan. That was 1964. Comrade Bhupesh Gupta brought back that debate again in 71. He brought it back in 74. And even CPIM leaders, starting from people like Vasudev Acharya, seven-time member of parliament, Prashanto Chatterjee, and later Comrade Prakash Karat, at various times, spoke in favor of providing rehabilitation and citizenship to refugees who have come away from East Pakistan or from Pakistan because of religious persecution. And friends, today we see that same conglomerate, political conglomerate, driven by that particular ideology, coming onto the streets or promoting or pushing or abating anti-CAA protests. It's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a dilemma. And so when one of the, one of the ministers of the left front government was asked what to do with the refugees, Bengali Hindu refugees who are settling in Marichapi, Deep Haldar's book is all about that. And mind you, these refugees and even Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee in his testimony, in his <coughs> intervention in the provisional parliament on 7th August in 1950 says, says that these refugees are not wanting your, you know, they're not wanting your doles. He says that don't, you know, don't have that, you know, in Bengali we said, doya chaya What they are saying is give them space, give them a life of dignity, they'll fend for themselves. Shama Prashad Mukherjee said this. We see that same thing happening in 79, 77, 79 in Marijapi. The Bengali Hindu refugees who were scattered felt that, oh, now a people's government has come to power in West Bengal, proletariat. So they came. They came to Marijapi. They started settling there. And as Deep will tell you, they started, you know, running their own schools, cooperative markets, various other health centers, agriculture. They started. They didn't want to be dependent on any doles that would be given by the government. And yet, they were fired upon, their wells were poisoned, their children were killed, their houses and huts burnt, they were thrown into the sea. Seven to eight thousand of them, conservative estimate, were massacred by the proletarian government of the left front in West Bengal. <clears throat> and they were primarily Dalits. And so, it's a very interesting conundrum in that sense. 
that from the 50s onwards, one of the primarily prima, primary support of the left movement in West Bengal were the refugees. Because they were told that once we come to power, we'll give you your rights. And then when they come to power in 77, 79, these very refugees are killed and fired upon. And then today, when there is this entire effort to give them citizenship, is the same proletarian leaders who oppose them, <laughs> who oppose that move. Therefore, I think it's extremely relevant and important to understand what these two authors <coughs> have done. It is very important for us to understand, and I'm talking in the context of citizenship alone, that at first you generate a narrative of illusion that we shall empower you. It is only we, when we come to power, we can give you your rights. You build up your entire political movement, your political narrative based on that illusion. And then when you come to power, you generate a conflict. You destroy them. And you look the other way. So when a particular minister of the left front in West Bengal was asked what to do with the refugees, he said, Mere tarao. Hit, hit and chase them away. So this is the, this is the proletarian expression of that. And of course, uh, uh, when the Trinamool government came to power, before they came to power in 2011, they said that we will, we will uh, institute a, a commission of inquiry on the Marichabi massacre and we shall release a white paper. That never happened. The white paper was never released. The commission of inquiry was never set up. And the only thing they did was to provide rice at kilo two, uh, at rupees two for the refugees. So therefore, as you'll read, one of them ruled that this is what they had promised us and finally they thought we are worth only rice at rupees two a kilo. So well, I would not, I'll not like to continue on this, but I just wanted to contextualize this uh, evening on the, on the current scenario. And I think it is very important for us to very cogently uh, to understand this and to be able to then push the narrative. Uh, we have uh, my very dear friend Avni Jesh, I think who has spent an entire lifetime <laughs> trying to counter this. Uh, this. But I think, I think we, it's time that uh, th th there is now a lot of documented work Ananji has done, Deep has done, and uh, Nanda Kumarji continues to do a lot of documented work which can expose <coughs> this particular worldview for what it actually is. Thank you so much.